Rights is based on a true story and it's one that I actually heard about 11 years ago when I was 17 years old. When I finished high school, I applied uh, for a Rotary Exchange. It lasts for 12 months. You write down three countries that you would like to be considered for and then after a round of sort of interviews, they decide where you're going to live, basically, for the next year. And so when it came to putting down my three countries, I had never seen snow before. So I put down Iceland, Sweden and Switzerland and I thought I would be in with a pretty good shot of having a white winter if I was sent to one of them. And anyway, after, you know, I think being the only applicant who was enthusiastic about a winter full of darkness, um, they sent me to Iceland. And it was during the first few months of my time there, my host parents took me on sort of a, a bit of a drive throughout the north. And as we drove through the hills, they pointed to three in particular that stood quite closely to the road. And they said, those three hills are called Tristapa. And it was there in 1830 that the last execution took place in Iceland. And I asked them, you know, who it was and what had happened, why they had been executed. And I was told that it had been a woman, that a woman called Agnes Magnusdottir had been beheaded for her role in essentially a very grisly double murder and an arson attack that attempted to sort of cover up the evidence and destroy the bodies. And um, for some strange reason, I'm not sure, I immediately became utterly kind of consumed with the idea of this woman, Agnes Magnus Dottir. I wanted to know about her early life. I wanted to know whether she had committed this crime, as everyone seemed to believe in Iceland, because she was inherently wicked and evil. When it came to sort of start to submit thesis for my higher degrees, my honours and my PhD, I decided that I would write about her um, to basically answer my own questions, but also, I think more particularly, to discover something of her humanity and her ambiguity and complexity, which I found were missing from the main narratives that had been related to me as an exchange student. I really didn't know how to go about writing a book because I'd never done it before. So there was a period for probably about two or three months where I would experiment and try a whole different kind of approaches. Sometimes we hear about stories or we'll read books and there's a timeliness to them in that they coincide with certain events that are occurring in our lives at the time that we read them. That means that they impact us in ways that they wouldn't ordinarily had we read them a year before or had we read them or encountered these stories a year later. And there was a timeliness, I think, when I first heard about the story of Agnes Magnus Dottir. You know, I was feeling, I was feeling incredibly isolated in that small Icelandic community and really, really struggling with that isolation and the alienation I felt. And that when I heard about the story of Agnes Magnus Dottir, who was so clearly an outsider, again, in a small Icelandic community, I, I felt something along the lines of an affinity or a kinship there. And by saying that, I don't mean to compare, you know, the experience of a homesick Australian kid and a woman condemned to death. You know, I do realise that there's, of course, a huge difference in you know, emotional intensity there. But I do think that sometimes we, um, we take something from stories because we see an element of our own difficulties in them. And I think that was the case. I never expected uh, Burial Rights to be adapted into a film. Well, I never thought it would be published. But, um, it's, I find it hugely exciting, uh, but I don't necessarily see it as sort of um, something that I'll have any ownership over, and I'm completely happy with that. You know, I think of it, a film and sort of a further retelling of the story of Agnes Magnus Dottir to be, you know, much the same as me taking previous narratives about this crime and her execution and turning it into a work of fiction, and now it's going to continue morphing and be made into a film, and that's fine. That can be their creative project. I don't feel that I need to interfere too much with that. Um, but no, we shall wait and see. I think it's still early days, but I'm really looking forward to seeing how they interpret her story.